Sometimes our best just isn't good enough. We try and we fall flat on our face. Hello, friend. I was thinking about a time where I was on a podcast. I don't know if you've heard of Entrepreneur on Fire, but it's a huge podcast. And John Lee Dumas does an awesome job interviewing different entrepreneurs. I'll have a link in the description. But this was my moment and I knew it. I was getting coaching from someone and I was building this online business and he was telling me how many thousands of people will come from this podcast. And so I go on this podcast, I was so nervous. I threw up before it started. (laughs) And so I'm rinsing out my mouth, getting out the taste. And then I go on the podcast. John was an excellent host and he interviewed me and I finished and was like, Finally, my moment has arrived. So the day that the podcast came out, man, I woke up like Christmas morning. I was excited and I had written a book and it was gonna sell like hotcakes. New business, awesome thing. The problem is it didn't work that way. A hundred people came through to my website. I failed and I knew it. I had my moment and I didn't seize it. So what do we do in these moments? I'll tell you what I did, I cried. Hopefully I didn't lose my man card with you, but I cry a lot. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, that's the first thing you should do when your best isn't good enough. Feel the emotions you're feeling, don't judge them. For me, I cry. For you, you might get angry. You might wanna hit something. I recommend a pillow. You might get down in the dumps. You might ignore it like nothing happened. But the ignoring and the shelving it and the putting it in a closet and acting like it doesn't matter, like I'm just gonna put this over here and I'm gonna be fine even though I had this huge moment and I fell, is not effective. But look at the emotions that actually happened. We can see this all throughout the Psalms in the Bible. David, a man after God's own heart, Look at the songs he's writing. (laughs) They're not like uplifting, cheerful things like, hey, 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 I'm on march and I'm away. No, he's lamenting. God, why are you against me? Why are you for my enemies? So feel the emotions. Don't judge them, just feel them. But don't get stuck there. See, David does this thing that I love. See, for me, when I cry, I'm not like David. Sometimes when I'm feeling strong emotions after falling on my face, Um, I like hide. I go in a dark room and lay on the floor and die for a while. Like, that's not effective, that's just wallowing. And so when I say feel emotions, I'm not saying wallowing. The next thing you should do is cry out to God. See, no matter what it is, good and bad, when it brings us to the feet of Jesus, it is a beautiful, wonderful thing. So after you cry, after you feel the emotions, no matter if you're angry at God, No matter if you're sad or looking down on yourself or judging yourself for the failure, bring those things to God. In fact, in the Bible, it says to cast our anxieties for God because he cares for you. It's the very thing you should do. But I think sometimes we hide from God when we're not doing well, or we ignore him, or I'll go to him when I'm happy with how my life is. No, 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 don't do that. When you fall, bring, bring your heart to him. And that's how we can be like David, a man after God's own heart. Number three, remember your why. When you fall flat on your face, remember why it matters. Why are you upset? Why? See, for me, one of the most driving forces in my life is serving God and trying to do my best for him. And number two is legacy. Like, I want my kids to see God's transforming work in my life. The uncomfortable truth with that is, where do we see evidence of God in someone's life the most? When everything's rosy? (laughs) Like when everything's great? No, it's when we fall flat on our face, when we're going through hardships, where everyone's abandoned us, where those are the moments where the cream rises to the top. See, remember your why. People are watching, people you care about, and that's not like judgment, like you gotta be perfect, like that's foolish. Like, not perfect. Committed, committed to do what God tells you to do. 
regardless of circumstances. I'm not gonna act like all of a sudden, no, it goes away like, oh yay, that's such, that was such a fun moment when I threw up before going on a podcast and thought it would be my big moment and then everything fell apart. No, it's still today, it's like, dang it. Man, I wish that was a home run instead of a strikeout. But I remember my why and I got back up. And I think it was a month later, Entrepreneur Magazine, I had submitted a thing to them and they said I could write for them. And so I started writing for them because I remembered my why and I got back up. Number four, do something physical. Like I joked about like hitting a pillow. I don't know, maybe that'll work for you. Um, I have friends that have a punching bag out back and go, at, go to town on that. That's great. For me, I run. I take those things, I cry out to God. In fact, when I'm running, I often cry out to God. You can combine these things. But do something physical, get moving. See, the thing about heartache and struggle is it can get us stuck and we can just sit there in our mess. I, as anyone, can do this expert mope session. Like, on a one to 10 scale, it's like a 10. Like, it is a good pout. <laughs> but how I avoid that is I go move my body. And when we move our body, it gets us out of our brain. See, ignoring our emotions, ignoring our pain is harmful. But living in it and wallowing it is just as harmful. So move your body in some way, shape, or form. And let's just acknowledge when we are struggling, we tend to want to numb and isolate. Those are the last things you want to do. That's why we're feeling the emotion, right? We're not numbing. We're crying out to God. And another tip, cry out to someone else. Not someone that's going to judge you, but someone that you've built relationship with that will just grieve with you. In fact, the Bible tells us to grieve with, it, with each other, to be joyful with each other. So give others in your life opportunity to grieve with you, to share the burden. Don't isolate or numb. All right, number five, improve. Okay, so I'm shooting these videos. This is like, this is a little too close to home. But with each video, hey, is this, is this the one? Are people gonna like this? Is this gonna resonate? Is this something someone's gonna wanna watch? If it is, hit a thumb up. But with each video, whether it did well or not, I'm like a CSI detective. I'm looking at it, what went wrong? Oh, where was it? Was it the click? Was it the intro? Where can my speaking get better? What can these things do? Like improve, what can you improve? Like going back to the entrepreneur on fire, I know exactly how I could have improved. I think I get great information. I should have had more stories in my tool belt because stories stick for you. With the latest failure, what can you learn? If you went back to addiction and that's the failure, can you be a little more aware of what was going on inside of you before you chose that? If you had a business and it failed, what went wrong? See, I think oftentimes when we fail, we look to blame. In fact, with that Entrepreneur on Fire episode, it was like my first thing was, oh, it's because I was late to the game and the time had passed. Or with a YouTube video, oh, the algorithm. Like, talk to anyone doing YouTube, they're gonna blame the algorithm. Talk to any biz anyone that leads, what are we gonna blame? the people we're leading, right? Like we're, we're looking for that. No, no, no. How can you improve? Ownership. See, life is trying your best and failing. That is life. It is full of it. But what will separate you is trying your best, failing, and getting up and trying again. And that is how you'll fail forward. Have a great day and God bless you in your journey.